Hello, friends. So the other day, I looked up twice, so to speak. The first time I looked up, I saw a helicopter spinning in the air with its spiral-shaped rotors. The second time I looked up, it was because upon seeing this helicopter, I decided to look up the etymology of the word helicopter. Now, believe it or not, the ancient Greeks and Romans did not have a word for helicopter. Hmm, wonder why that is. Didn't they have helicopters back then? Well, as it turns out, as I recently learned, the Greeks and Romans did not have those vertically flying devices that we today call helicopters, but the Chinese, and later the Japanese did. Or at least, the Chinese invented the first vertically flying devices during the Jin period, which roughly corresponded to the late Roman period in Europe. But what they invented was nothing like our modern helicopters. In Chinese, they are called Ju Qing Ting, or Taketombo in Japanese or literally bamboo dragonflies, and originally, they were mostly used by children as toys, and actually, for over a thousand years, these toys were the only such devices in existence that remotely resembled a modern-day helicopter, until Leonardo da Vinci came up with a more modern version, which, together with the collaboration of other experts over the next few centuries, gradually developed into the modern-day flying device. So anyway, although the ancient Greeks didn't have a word for helicopter, they did have a word for spy hole, which was helix. Sound familiar? Hopefully. So yes, that's the ancestor of our English word helix, and also the ancestor of the word for propeller in many Romance languages. And that of course makes sense when you think about it, because propellers really do just create spirals of air. And it doesn't stop there. The Greeks also had a name for wing, pteron, which, when you first hear it, might not sound familiar, but upon further analysis, we realize that pteron, through its common Proto-Indo-European ancestor, is related to a modern word feather. Also, we recognize pteron in the English word pterodactyl, a dinosaur that apparently had wing-like fingers, hence its name. Hmm, creative. So anyway, with these two words, helix and pteron, the whole concept of a helicopter starts to really, well, take off. So okay, the ancient Greeks had spirals, and they had wings. So, wait, no, sorry, they had a word for those two things. I guess I should say, oops. Anyway, by the time the helicopter became a thing, the ancient Greeks weren't around anymore. So why is the English word helicopter based on these two ancient Greek terms? Well. As is often the case in etymology, in English and in other languages, ancient Greek has a way of being pretty influential. And oftentimes, when people come up with a new device and they want to give it a fancy name, they choose a name in ancient Greek. And so that's exactly what the Frenchman Gustave de Ponton d'Amécourt, who invented a prototype of the helicopter in the 1860s, decided to do. Because, well, he wanted to emphasize how his new invention could just lift straight up into the air, hover for a bit, move around, and go right back down. All by just thrusting up a little bit while spinning its rotors really fast. Kind of like this. Except, you know, faster and smoother. And that, my friends, is the story of Helicopter. Thanks for watching.